this is the last topic which I'm going to teach you in dermatology. That is nail disorder. And this is a, you know, compilation of different diseases which affect the nail. So a lot of uh, questions can be expected from this topic. So please pay attention. So in the beginning, uh, let's talk about how nail is formed. So see this, the nail plate, okay, nail plate rises from the nail matrix and lies on the nail bed. Let's talk about a bit of theory, then I'll explain this with the picture. The nail plate arises from the nail matrix and it lies on the nail bed. The keratinous plate is produced by cells of the dorsal matrix and to a much lesser extent, the ventral bed. So this uh, nail, you know, which we see in every person is made up of keratin protein again, just like here. Nail is also made up of keratin protein. Fingernail grow about one centimeter every three months and toenail at about one third of this rate. So fingernail grow much fast, faster than the toenail, okay? And it is an individual variation. Some people, uh, you know, can grow the fingernail quite faster than the other, but this is an average one. Now, another question is why we need to examine the nail? The answer here, the condition of the nail may reflect both local and systemic disease in many of the people. Local disease means some infection, some fungal infection, there's some, something known as paronychia, okay? Uh, some other problem and systemic disease like infective endocarditis, like bronchogenic carcinoma, isn't it? Like cyanotic congenital heart disease, like inflammatory bowel disease. So many of those conditions, you know, are reflected by some changes in the nail. So nail examination is an important part of our, uh, you know, general examination of the patient. Let's move on, Let's see here. This is the normal anatomy of the nail. Please pay attention, this is important knowledge here for you. See this, this is a distal phalanx. Isn't the distal phalanx. See this, this is bone, okay, here is a joint. Okay, and there is a proximal phalanx somewhere there, or middle phalanx, it depends which, which finger you are talking. Now, uh, here is a bone at the center. Okay, this is known as matrix. This is a, you know, dorsal matrix, you can say, dorsal, okay. And this is the nail bed. This is the ventral nail bed. So majority of the nail plate, this is a nail plate. You can clearly see here. This nail plate is synthesized by this area, the dorsal matrix. And a bit of you know, contribution is from this area as well. Okay, so this is called proximal nail fold. Okay, nail fold. And this is known as you know, nail bed, okay, a nail fold and plate angle. This is the angle. This angle is very, very important in case of clubbing. When we examine clubbing, this angle is very important to understand, okay? I'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on when we reach the discussion of clubbing. Now, with this, uh, let's enter into the nail disorders. Examination of the nail fold may reveal paronychia. Paronychia. Now, paro means para. Para means around the nail plate. So if the skin and the soft tissue which are around the nail plate are inflamed, we call it paronychia. Okay, please understand like this. The skin and soft tissue which are around the nail plate, if they are inflamed or infected, we use the term paronychia. They can be acute or chronic. Acute paronychia is usually caused by Staphylococci and similar pus forming organism. And chronic paronychia, usually seen in diabetic people, and usually it is caused by fungal infection. There would be ragged cuticle and dilated or thrombosed capillary in the proximal nail fold, and these points towards connective tissue disorders. Okay, connective tissue disorders like dermatomyositis.
Now, see here, look at the picture. Now, can you tell me what is this condition? Yes, what is this? What's the diagnosis? This is the morphological diagnosis. What term you want to use here? Peronychia. Exactly. This is known as paronychia. Very good. Yes. This is paronychia. See this? This is the nail plate. Isn't it? Nail plate. And here is a skin and soft tissue which is surrounding the nail plate. So if it is inflamed or infected, we use the term paronychia. There is a swelling here. There is redness. Okay. Uh, probably it is hot as well. So it looks like an infection here. Now, look at this picture. See here, this is a case of dermatomyositis. It is erythematous. Okay. There are, see this, a bit of uh, capillaries I can see here. Isn't it? This area is a dilated and tortuous type of capillary. A bit of swelling, a bit of thickening. Okay, this is known as Gautron papule. Gautron papule. This Gautron papule is an important clinical feature of dermatomyositis. Very important MCQ question from the exam point of view. Don't forget. Gotron's papule, dermatomyositis. Now, some of the congenital conditions may occur in the nail. Look at this nail here. This is, you know, Pachyonychia congenita. This is a rare type of autosomal dominant condition where patient is having this type of nail from the time of birth. Okay. Later on, it may be very prominent or obvious. Most cases arise due to mutation in a particular group of keratin gene and they develop nail like this, okay? They are grossly thickened, isn't it? And discolored from the time of birth. Of course, you know, uh, when the baby is small, you know, they, they are not that very prominent, probably. They're slightly thicker uh, and a bit of discolored, but when the, the person become older or bigger, then it is very, very obvious. Now, another type of nail disorders occur because of trauma. Okay, because of trauma. There are two important terms which are mentioned here splinter hemorrhage and subungal hematoma. Now, splinter hemorrhage means splinter shaped hemorrhage. These are a linear, you know, type of hemorrhage is there. The most common cause is trauma, but they're also seen in infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis. We have studied that before. Splinter hemorrhages are seen in infective endocarditis. Maybe seen in psoriasis also, but the most important cause is trauma. Another is a subungal hematoma. Subungal means below the nail plate. Okay. Most of us have suffered from this problem. Uh, if uh, if our finger, okay, is badly injured, if our nail plate is injured, okay, uh, then uh, or crushed, okay accidentally then after a few days you know we have some bluish type of discoloration below the nail plate this is a perfect uh, you know explanation of subungal hematoma you don't need to do anything uh, within a period of time you know it will disappear you see here this is a splinter hemorrhage see this flame shaped uh, hemorrhages a splinter shaped hemorrhage you can say and this is the subungal hematoma because of the trauma Another type of nail disorders are habit tick dystrophy. This habit tick dystrophy means because of the habitual picking of the proximal nail fold of the thumb. This, is, this type of habit is uh, common in so many people. This produces a ladder pattern of transverse ridges and furrows of the center of the nail. Okay, so this is uh, just like you know uh, habit developed by the patient habit tick dystrophy see there look at the picture here right have a look here the person have uh, you know habit of uh, slightly biting okay biting this area or even the nail bed so many people uh, they, when they are anxious you know they can bite or chew their finger in a in a you know easier term we can say they chew their finger and over a period of time their nail will develop this type of problem. Another one is called 
onico gryphosis onico gryphosis this is also known as ingrowing toenail now if we wear some tight type of shoes which are ill fitting shoes okay tight type of shoes then what will happen the toe which are uh, you know uh, there are constantly compressed or constantly deformed by that tight fitting or ill fitting shoes and over a period of time it can develop ingrowing toenail also known as onychogryphosis now better explained by this picture now see here very very good picture of you know onychogryphosis in growing toenail and over a period of time this this age of the uh, you know a toenail may go deeper into the soft tissue and it may cause a lot of pain and even infection there there are certain systemic disease where the nail is affected uh, one of the uh, common uh, you know situation is coelonychia coelonychia every student know coelonychia is seen in iron deficiency anemia okay and this is a spoon shaped deformity of the nail another is called bue's line these are the transverse groove which appear at the same time in all nail a few weeks after an acute illness and uh, it is moving out to the free margin as the nails grow so better you know uh, shown by the picture than describing it see here this is coelonychia a very typical one spoon shaped nail central depression here and these nails are uh, these nails are quite brittle also and these are called bue's line okay bue's line and over a period of time you know when the nail is growing from here this bue's line will slowly descend uh, to the distal area and then disappear but it takes time and these are the reaction to the acute illness Now, one of the very important part of this lecture is the digital clubbing. And if any question, uh, you know, the examiner want to ask, probably this is the first one, clubbing. Now, every student know what is clubbing. Okay, it is a deformity of the nail nail bed or nail plate uh, as a response of different type of illness or condition in the patient. In its most gross form. this digital clubbing is seen as a bulbous swelling okay bulbous swelling of the tip of the finger or toes it is seen in both hands as well as feet means fingers and toes both are affected the normal angle between the proximal part of the nail and the skin is lost in case of digital clubbing Now there are different stages of the digital clubbing. Stage one to stage four, you know, it is mentioned in the different medical textbook. Stage one means fluctuation of the nail bed angle. Fluctuation means if I uh, press it firmly there, you know, I can uh, move the nail plate. This is called fluctuation. Second, the loss of angle, which is known as lobi bond angle. Lobi bond angle means angle between the nail plate. and the nail fold so that is lost normally the lobi bond angle so let me write the name here so that you know lobi bonds angle this lobi bonds angle is the uh, remember that picture which i showed you before that's the angle i'm talking about here it is the angle between uh, the uh, nail uh, fold and the nail plate now this lobi bonds angle the normal angle is uh, less than 160 it is less than 160 okay 160 degree of course but in case of clubbing what happens there is a proliferation okay of the you know nail bed as well as proximal part of the nail fold so this angle is lost in other word the angle is more than 180 degree more than 180 degree in case of clubbing in clubbing you remember these uh, you know uh, uh, interesting facts here okay because they are commonly asked in different types of paper now 
what are the uh, you know common causes uh, of the clubbing here respiratory causes respiratory disease like bronchogenic carcinoma is very very common condition uh, in case of you know adult especially in case of older male who are heavy smoker asbestosis is also one of the uh, you know risk factor for the development of lung cancer as well as mesothelioma this mesothelioma is a pleural malignancy suppurative lung disease like empyema thoracis bronchiectasis cystic fibrosis okay and uh, what is the another one a suppurative lung disease which is not mentioned here yes anybody brain abscess lung abscess lung abscess excellent lung abscess of course very good so suppurative lung disease you can always uh, mention these terms empyema thoracis bronchiectasis cystic fibrosis and lung abscess all of them are important cause of clubbing fibrosing alveolitis may also lead to clubbing all of these are uh, responsible uh, for clubbing formation because of hypoxia from the cardiac uh, condition we have cyanotic congenital heart disease tetralogy of fallot truncus arteriosus the tapbr okay, all other type of cyanotic congenital heart disease can lead to clubbing and even infective endocarditis is an important cause so don't forget that okay other uh, causes apart from them are inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease biliary cirrhosis not other types of cirrhosis okay only biliary type thyrotoxicosis and even familial if you uh, do not find any cause for clubbing and if other family members are also having you know uh, who knows this is a familial type of clubbing in the patient now look at the picture please mute yourself okay now see this look at this picture here uh, this is the clubbing here now can you guess what uh, uh, is the diagnosis here anybody quick guess yes probably this is a cyanotic heart disease because the nail uh, look like bluish good very good very good guess very good so that's the point uh, you know i want you to note here there's a there's a cyanosis along with clubbing both okay so probably this is a serious type of lung disease or cyanotic congenital type of heart disease or congenital uh, type of heart disease can uh, present like this but looking at the hand of this patient you know the patient uh, is a quite older one older type of patient so uh, if you ask me the first choice uh, of uh, you know the cause here may be lung cancer okay for me uh, i will choose or pick lung cancer as the number one cause because the age of the patient cyanotic congenital heart disease Uh, present much much earlier uh, than this particular age, but we cannot uh, you know ignore. Sometimes even Eisenmenger syndrome can occur uh, in the patient, which is also a cyanotic type of disease. Let's move on. Now, whitening of the nail, also known as leukonychia. Leuko is white, nychia is nail. So whitening of the nail is a rare sign of hypoalbuminemia. but it is not always a sign of hypoalbuminemia or sometimes even the normal person can have whitening of the nail and when we check the albumin level uh, it is uh, normal okay so this is not a very very important type of sign half and half nail okay another condition is known as half and half nail that means white proximally and red brown distally are seen in some patient of renal failure half and half nail let's see the picture here this is leukonychia see this whitening of the nail okay leukonychia and this is half and half nail look at the you know proximal part okay this is whitening and the distal part is still reddish brown half and half nail this is also not routinely found in the patient of renal failure but some of the patient may develop it now this is a schematic diagram of a different type of nail changes okay can be asked uh, very easily in the exam the first one is coelonychia this is coelonychia 
The second Buse line is the transverse type of line which are seen in the reaction to acutilness. The C and D are called digital clubbing. Okay, digital clubbing. Uh, it is better seen from the side view. See this. This is a drumstick appearance of the finger. Uh, very classical, you know, piece of clubbing. And the fourth is a normal one. This is known as nail bed angle. Okay, nail bed angle. This one. So in case of clubbing, this angle is is disappeared. And uh, there is one uh, more uh, type of test, you know, which we can do uh, in this condition. This is known as you know, uh, asking the patient uh, to oppose their finger and try to make the diamond shaped angle there. This is known as Shamroth sign. So in case of normal uh, finger, okay, uh, where there is no clubbing, the diamond shaped angle is routinely seen. Whereas in case of uh, clubbing, the diamond shaped angle when we oppose the two fingers are not seen. Okay, this is obliterated. The typical diamond shaped angle is lost. So this type of clinical examination can be done. Okay, let's move on. Now, what are the other, uh, you know, nail uh, changes uh, occur in some of the other diseases? In psoriasis, there is some uh, changes occur in the uh, nail plate. Okay, in psoriasis, you have already studied that. There is a coarse pitting of the nail plate. There is an early separation of the nail plate from the nail bed. This is known as onycholysis. And also uh, there is a, you know, the typical type of flecking deposition on the nail as a result of subangle hyperkeratosis. All of these are typical features of psoriasis. In eczema also, there may be changes in the nail, okay? And in case of lichen planus and severe alopecia areata also, there is some changes in the nail. So we need to examine the patient quite well and try to find out some other clues for the diagnosis. Sometimes only the exams of the nail, you know, is misguiding us, you know. So examine the patient as a whole, try to find out something else. There is a term known as tracheonychia, okay, tracheonychia, is a fine roughness and white discoloration of the nail plate, which is seen in alopecia areata. Let's move on. Now look at the picture here. She's very, you know, clearly telling us this is a psoriatic nail. You know, that's what I'm, I'm uh, talking now. Look at this color of the nail. Okay, very, uh, you know, white type of uh, nail, and the overall health of the nail is not good. But if I examine this patient, uh, you know, uh, generalized type of examination, I'll definitely see some other features of psoriasis in the patient. This is nail uh, disorder in alopecia areata. Look at this, it doesn't look healthy, you know. There is some uh, ridges present in the nail. Lastly, in case of dermatophyte infection, okay, which is known as onychomycosis, there's a lot of changes in the nail. There is yellow brown discoloration and crumbling of the plate, which may start distally and spread proximally. Usually only a few nails uh, are affected uh, in the beginning, but it depends how many nails are infected. Diagnosis uh, depends on the clipping of the nail and sending it to the lab, okay? And they will do KOH mount. And if the high fee, is seen or mycelia are seen, then we know this is a dermatophyte infection because dermatophytes are a hyphal type of fungi. And if I still the doubt exists, you can go for the culture, okay? Now, can you tell me uh, which type of treatment we prefer in case of onychomyces treatment? Which type of treatment, yes? fungal treatment. Yes, are they like a, a local local type of treatment or some systemic type of treatment? That's the question. Systemic type. Systemic. They are all always time. exactly. They are always systemic. Okay. okay, always systemic. Very good. Never forget this. Though uh, sometimes what we what we believe or think, oh, it is only nails are affected. So nails are the local tissue or structure there. So why don't we prescribe 
the you know cream or ointment type of antifungal drug not at all this is a very wrong type of thinking we have to give systemic uh, you know antifungal drug here okay like grishofulvin and tarbinafin tarbinafin is preferred over grishofulvin because of the relatively shorter duration of treatment but having said that okay that shorter duration is also uh, almost you know up to uh, two to three months but uh, grishofulvin is much longer than that so tarbinafin and grishofulvin are the two important treatment of a, a dermatophyte infection of the nail look at this picture here okay see this nobody can say this is a normal nail this is absolutely abnormal and if you do not know what is the proper diagnosis better to clip the nail a part of the nail and send to the lab and tell them i want koas mount to be done here and if they you know report as a high hyphal or mycelial type of fungi shin then you got a diagnosis and go for the treatment now okay so these are the questions okay so at the end i like to request you all to like the video as much as possible share it among your friends and subscribe to the channel so that it will encourage me a lot for the future videos and recordings thank you so much